because the science of torsion fields tells us just what I told you from St. Francis. Right. The power of a small group of people, 7,000 people meditating together, reduces global terrorism and fatalities and war and shooting each other by 75%. Three out of four of those incidents don't happen. Yep. That means that three out of four people that would steal the food don't steal the food. That means that three out of four people who would die of malnutrition don't. So it's all about a frequency and it sounds really preposterous and that's why we have to break people into it slowly and get you step by step through the incremental process of realizing that the consciousness field itself is humanity. And again, we don't want to narrow it down to one year. No. Um, we're actually talking about a span of time under which we on the earth are undergoing a transformation and, and a possible heightening of consciousness everywhere. But at the same time, as consciousness expands and as people begin to grow, as you said, there are birth, there are birth pains, all right? Right. A lot of people are going to be experiencing, you know, breakups of relationships, time is speeding up, events are speeding up around them. I would also say that, you know, opening your channel to your higher self is done through meditation more than anything Absolutely. else. And every person has that has that potential within their own body to open those channels and to get connected with their higher self and with God. So so that's going to be the key in the coming days. But for anyone for whom their intuition has worked for them reliably in the past, then listen to that voice, whether it's a real voice or a metaphorical voice. Because if you've got a very strong feeling that there's action you need to take, if you need to sell your stocks, if you need to you know, sell your house or take a loss on your house or move here or do that or not be with this person or whatever it is that you need, you know, that, 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 you're, that you're hearing, that you have to do, then do it, because you're probably right, and probably in these times more than any others, those messages that are coming to you, in whichever individual way those messages do come to you, they're likely to be coming through loud and clear. And what Like is, synchronicity, yeah. yeah. What's probably the case is that everyone, each in their own way, is going to be getting this kind of information, and then it's our, it's, it's an, it's our responsibility whether to pick it up how to interpret it, whether to choose to act on it or not with our own free will. We have that capacity, and if we're not confident in having that capacity, then there are ways to learn, and it starts now. These are hertz, frequencies, or cycles per second that the musicians can retune their instruments to play and experiment with. Why? Again, these are the creator's musical scale, the original solfeggio, buried for 3,000 years in the Bible. So the ancient priests who knew how to levitate the huge stones for the building of the pyramids and the Masonic knowledge that predated ancient Egypt, the ability to have this information, these frequencies, serve the function of creation, destruction, and miracles on behalf of the empowered people who had access to this knowledge. I say that because of this metaphor. This is the difference between the power of the, our Creator and anything else, particularly evil. That you can go into a pitch black room full of evil, full of darkness, and light a little candle, and instantly that darkness flees. But you can't do the opposite. You can't go into a well-lit room full of truth and wisdom and righteousness and joy and health and harmony with the universal power. And you can't take a, any amount of darkness and go into that well-lit room and have any effect whatsoever. That is the metaphor which I frequently think of when I think that I'm not empowered. It is the greatest lesson for me and I think for everybody else to know that we're on the winning side and that we win in the end. You get a real chance 
to make the difference that this time between now and 2012, 13, and 14, this time that's on us, it will be here in less than five years. It started in 2004. It'll go to 2012 or 13. And it will be the opportunity to open up your consciousness. The fact is, everything all exists all at the same time. And that is going to be more and more revealed as we go forward. With no limit on time, well, by the way, I didn't bring this up earlier, but we're also doing time travel. I don't know if you guys have been heard anything about it. But they have found a way to slow and even stop light. And as you slow light, it gathers more mass. And as it gathers more mass, it actually alters the time of elements. So we have now altered the spin of electrons by slowing light. And we have time-traveled electrons. Not objects yet, not animals yet, but electrons. We've already done it. It's just a matter of very little time before we start to be able to alter time. With I'll share with you a story. Uh, researchers recently related in, uh, in one of the Nature magazines. Uh, this is a, a very beautiful and very touching story, uh, the story of geese. I know some of you probably have, have read or heard of this story. Researchers have determined that geese, as they fly together, are, are very closely tuned to one another. As they fly in their flock, for example, that the, the geese, by flying together in a formation, that they add over 71% greater distance in moving together toward a common goal than if each of those geese were to move separately and independently on their own. Uh, we probably have uh, something that we can learn from that. The, uh, the researchers determined that uh, the geese, as the, the lead geese goose, as the, I'm sorry, <laughs> as the head goose would move forward in his flock and as he would become tired of his own volition, of his own choice, he would drop and fall behind and allow someone else to take the lead and lead the whole toward their greater goal. Uh, and perhaps for me, the most beautiful portion of, uh, of this, this story is that researchers determined uh, through their experience and through their observation that any time within a flock that uh, any one goose is injured from a hunter's bullet or from illness, and chooses to fall out of the formation, always, 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 that goose is always accompanied by at least two others who will follow him to the ground and will stay with him until he either recovers from his injuries or dies. And if he recovers from the injuries, together the three will follow from one flock to another and another until they reach their original flock. And if he dies, then the one that is left behind will be left, and the other two will catch up with that original flock. The beauty of that story and the metaphor for me is I believe we are essentially living as a flock moving toward a common goal. My choice is that no one gets left behind. Everyone learns at a different level. Everyone understands and accelerates at a different pace, and we're all moving toward the same place. We're all part of this process. Our ability to perceive the world around us is going to expand. By no choice, by no studying, by no getting ready, your ability as a spiritual being is going to go from here, which is what we most see, to about here. You're going to see things on the side of you. You're going to see movements. You're going to see energy in between you and the person that you're talking to. You're going to perceive thoughts. You're going to see beings that you thought were dead, being able to get closer to you and to have conversations with you. Because as this compression of time comes, because the damn universe is moving, reality expands. You can have information that you would know is real, 
you read these things, you ask questions, make up your own mind. Don't believe what everybody is telling you. Think for yourself. Don't let fear rule your life because if, if you're afraid, if fear is holding you back, you're not going to progress as we go into the new earth. And it's happening. Our vibrations are increasing. There's no way to hold it back, but some will be left behind because they can't change quick enough. 